And go. Oh, you mustn't say that. Isn't it natural that I should have a certain delicacy in talking to my old friend's daughter about her behind her back? You and she will have plenty of opportunity to talk about that when she comes. No, she won't talk about it either. However, I dare say you have good reasons for telling me nothing. Only, mind this, Mr. Craig. I expect there will be a battle right out when my mother hears my chance to relate project. I'm afraid there will be. Well, I shall win, because I want nothing but my fair lunch to start there tomorrow, earning my own living Devlin for Honoria. Besides, it seems I have no secrets to keep up, and it seems she has. I shall use that to advantage over her if necessary. Oh, no. Pray, no. You wouldn't do such a thing. Then tell me why not. I, I really cannot. I appeal to your good feelings. Besides, I'm afraid you may be too bold. Your mother is not to be tribal just when she's angry. You can't fight me, Mr. Craig. At that month while working at Chancery Lane, I had the opportunity of taking the measure of one or two women very like my mother. You may back me to win. But if I get harder in my ignorance than I need, remember, it is you who refuse to enlighten me. Now let us drop the subject. One word, Miss Warren. It's very difficult, but you... Uh... Here they are. How do, Mother? Mr. Craig's been here this half hour, waiting for you. Well, if you've been waiting, Craig, it's your own fault. I thought you had the gumption to know I'd be right to Mother Three Tin Train. Vivi, put your hat on, dear. Who did sunburn? Oh, I forgot to introduce you. Sir George Cox, my little Vivi. May I shake hands with the young lady whom I have known by reputation very long as the daughter of one of my oldest friends? If you like. Will you come in, or shall I get a couple more chairs? Well, George, what do you think of her? <laughs> she has a powerful fist. Uh, did you shake hands with her, Braddy? Yes, it will pass off presently. I hope so. Don't be crying. 
They might hear us from the window. Oh, look here. Uh, did he ever tell you who the girl's uh, father was? No. Who? Uh, have you any suspicion of who she is? No. <laughs> I know, of course, that perhaps you might feel bound not to tell if she has said anything. But it's very awkward to be uncertain about it now that we shall be seeing her every day. We don't exactly know how we ought to feel. What difference can it make? We take her on her own merits. What does it matter who her father was? Then you know who he is. I just said no now. <laughs> Did you not hear me? Look here, pray. If I ask you a particular thing, if you do know, oh, I only say if you know, you might at least set my mind at rest her. The fact is, I feel attracted. What? <laughs> oh, don't be alarmed. It's quite an innocent feeling. That's what puzzles me about it. Uh, why, for all I know, I might be her father. You did puzzle. You know for certain that I'm not. I know nothing about it any more than you. But really, Crofts, you? It's out of the question. There's not the least resemblance. As to that, there's no resemblance between her and her mother that I can see. I suppose she's not your daughter, is she? Really, Crofts? <laughs> no offense, Ray. Quite allowable between two men of the world. Listen to me, my dear Crofts. I've had nothing to do with that side of Miss Warren's life, and never had. She's never spoken to me about it, and I've never spoken to her about it. Your... Your delicacy in the situation will tell you that a handsome woman like that needs some friends who are not... Well... None of that footing with her. The, the effects of her own beauty would become a torment to her if she could not escape from it occasionally. Besides... I feel that you're probably on much more confident of terms with Kitty than I am. Surely you can ask her the question yourself. I have asked her, her, but she's determined to keep that child all to herself, that she would deny it ever had a father if she could. I'm thoroughly uncomfortable with her. Well, as it is, we both are old enough to be her father. I don't mind agreeing that we both regard Vivian a parental way. As a young woman, we are bound to protect and help. I'm no uh, older than you when it comes to that. Yes, you are, my dear Crouch. You were born old. I was born a boy. I've never had the assurance of a grown-up man in my life. 